Hi, my name is Nick Wisman, and I wanted to read a short scene from my historical fantasy, The Red Wraith. The scene takes place about halfway through the book when the protagonist, Nason, who is a Native American, is trapped inside a church by a mob. Nason is with a white woman named Azar and a Native American woman named Tay. Finally, Nason understood what was happening. Someone, the innkeeper, must have seen him go upstairs with Azar and inform the burned men and his disciples, pale men who become insane with rage at the thought of one of their women lying with a red man. Speaking with Azar had dredged up memories of Jahan, but now the worst of them were being recreated. Except this time, Nason was awake. He wouldn't, couldn't dishonor Jahan's memory by committing another massacre, but it was past time for this village to learn of the Red Wraith. When I was 16, I burned the plantation upon which I'd been enslaved, he said in Anglo. He moved toward the door, his voice grew in volume, amplifying as it had in the forest clearing. He did his best to throw his words outside the church, but Tay and Azara were holding their ears. When I was 17, I returned home, found pale men, women, and children squatting in my people's homes, and marched those invaders to their deaths. Now he began enlarging his image to match his voice, casting an illusion like he had on his guardian spirit day. Tay and Azara flinched as the specter enveloped them, but expanded harmlessly. For these deeds and others, some real, some rumor, I've been named the Red Wraith. Gasps and shouts of alarm sounded from the road as his image emerged. Nason didn't know for certain what his image looked like, but he'd wanted it to appear in an evening pose, with arms down and head bent, his telltale hair hanging in front of its face. This name is not undeserved. He imagined his veins and arteries shining black and white, and the second round of gasps signaled that his appearance continued to conform to his vision. Frantic footsteps followed, a few at first, then a stampede toward him. But even after all I've done and all your kind has done to me, I would never think so ill of your people that the idea of a pale man lying with a red woman would drive me to murder. He pictured his image raising its head and revealing the angry brand that marred his face. More footsteps. There couldn't be many pale men left outside the church. I will, however, do whatever it takes to defend myself against such ignorance. He focused on making his vision stand, spread its arms, and shoot streaks of shadow and light from its outstretched palm. A few final footsteps sounded and all was quiet until the burned man offered his rebuttal. Self-confessed demon spawn, he shrieked from the other side of the door, the venom in his voice startling even Tay, who couldn't understand his words. You do not scare me. You do not scare the people in this town. We will not allow evil of your ilk to propagate. Forgive me, Lord, but this is no longer your place. It belongs now to the fires of hell. An avalanche of heat slammed against the door, forcing Nason back as he marveled at how much myrrh the burned man was turning into fire. A immense gust of it, hot enough to burn through wood in an instant. Before Nason had taken three steps, the door was gone, and the burned man was visible through its remnant, pointing his blunderbuss directly at Nason's head and smiling maniacally. So that's it. Uh, if you'd like to click, the Red Wraith is available on Amazon and other major vendors. Uh, please check it out. Thanks.